Hi, my name is Mark. And my name is Sarah. And we like to talk about video games. And today we're talking about community in Stardew Valley. I don't know what that is, but it's definitely not an ape. It's like a weird Pikachu monster. Yeah. What? What? That would be our developer. So, Stardew Valley. Hello, Mark. Welcome to Stardew Valley. My. Hello. My unexpected favorite game of probably 2016. Um. <laughs> I'm here to talk today about the idea of community in Hello, Mr. Alien in Stardew Valley. And by Hello. community, I don't mean the the fandom or the the group surrounding. I mean the actual characters in game. Of Stardew Valley. Um, mm. I'm going to talk a little bit about the game. From what I understand, it's basically a um, a Harvest Moon type game. Yeah. Um, I thought the Harvest Moon was the DS, but that's apparently much older. Yeah, from what I can tell, it, it looks like the game was pretty inspired by by Harvest Moon, and Harvest Moon's been out for a very long time. Uh, I played it the most on the N64, but I believe it's been out even earlier than that. Mm. It's one of the older games, and Concerned Ape, our developer, was definitely very inspired by the game as well. Very nearly gave Tamara Mohawk there. So, <laughs> talk a little bit about what the game is about. It's basically a farming sim. You integrate yourself into a community, you run a farm, you get to know people, you cause a lot of trouble, you give people a number of gifts in order to increase their affection status, etc. Et it's, it's a very typical game. Not the type of game I usually play. Um, mm -hmm. You know me, I'm more of a an, an RPG and adventure stories type of person. I wouldn't normally sit down to a simulator, but the game was recommended to me by a lot of people whose judgment I generally approve of. And so I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a shot and see if it's going to do for me what everybody seems to think it's going to do. Um, so I shelled out the £10 and was very, very pleasantly surprised by the game that I got. I uh, am already a big fan of the the pixel animation. Um, yeah. That's always been my, my favorite style yeah. for these kind of games. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying the, the, the customization options they're giving you there. Yeah, he... And now we have Santa yes, on his bed. This is Santa, our grandfather, who is on his deathbed as we speak and apparently doing the whole will thing that people do when they die. And his gift to right. us is an envelope, apparently, which I know that probably seems like a really cheap thing to give your grandson at, at your deathbed, but come on, guys, just give it a minute. Granddad knows what Here's he's doing. Here's the ladder. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Granddad knows what he's doing. What? He's He knows that we're going to eventually reach a point in our lives when we are not happy with how things what? are going. Listen, grandson. Life sucks, and eventually your soul will be crushed under the weight of modern society. Okay, okay, he didn't. <laughs> so here's an envelope, and open it when you get to that point. <laughs> Imagine if you opened it and just a confetti cannon exploded out of it. <laughs> Celebrate. Just a, just a whoopee cushion. Yeah. <laughs> Your granddad was a joker. But anyway, thank you, Grandpa. Yep. So the, the game moves on now. Welcome to Georgia Corp, which is the workplace of our little protagonist. Um, I've never worked in an office, but I'm going to assume it's pretty much like this, and that smiling is not something you generally do. Um, the guy with the cowboy hat licking his lips is... Uh, yeah. That's a little weird. He's enjoying himself a little bit too much. Um, and here is your protagonist, Tamar, who is... Apparently losing the will to live, or maybe he's just sick of having a computer three times as big as he is. I, I have no idea. That is a huge-ass monitor. <laughs> it is a very big monitor, but he's had it. He's remembered the gift from Grandpa, and he's figured this is the time to open it. And so he does. Dear Tamar, if you're reading this, you must be in dire need of a change. The same thing happened to me long ago. I lost sight of what mattered most in life, real connections with other people and nature. So I dropped everything and moved to the place I truly belong. Pizza Hut. <laughs> it was not Pizza Hut. I've enclosed the deed to that place. My pride and joy, Brisbee Farm. It's located in Stardew Valley on the southern coast. It's the perfect place to start your new life. 
This was my most precious gift of all, and now it's yours. I know you'll honor the family name, my boy. Good luck. Love, Grandpa. P.S. If Lewis is still alive, say hi to the old guy for me, will ya? He's still alive. Tell him he owes me five bucks. <laughs> Probably does. If, if I know anything about Lewis, he definitely owes you five bucks. But anyway, say Grandpa wasn't being cheap. He left you a property. Yeah. And now you're going to go... sell it immediately. No, you're trying to escape <laughs> from the corporate life. Just, just chill. <laughs> Damn it. That's the entire point of invest, <laughs> invest, invest, invest. You are investing. You're investing in your future happiness. <laughs> just making your way to Stardew Valley to begin your new life, which will be a life of hard work and making friends with some very, very strange people. And birds and taking screenshots. And taking screenshots because I freaking loved how this game looks. Okay, so we have arrived at Stardew Valley and thus we arrive at the topic I wanted to discuss in the first place, which is the idea of the in-game community. Um, Robin here mm-hmm. is the first person that you meet and she's very similar to all the other characters. You have a friendship rating with her that can be increased by just talking to her, by hanging out with her, by doing requests for her and the good old-fashioned giving them presents. But you're limited. <laughs> you're limited to two a week, so it doesn't let you abuse that. This is mm-hmm. her introducing you to your lovely new home that, judging by Tamar's reaction there, needs an awful lot of work. Sure, it's a bit overgrown, but there's good soil underneath that mess. See, that's a metaphor. <laughs> that's a metaphor for life. Look how great those weeds are growing. <laughs> it's got to be good soil. <laughs> <laughs> Weeds can grow in anything. But anyway, we have arrived at our new home. And so the game is divided into three main factors. The first is basically tidying up mess. The point of the game, and one of the major appeals to it for a lot of people, is the fact that you spend time and effort and energy and you put this farm in order and you work it back into being a profitable part of the town, which cheers a lot of Mm. people up, quite frankly. Um, The second part would be, there is a little bit of an RPG element. There is, fighting is included in some of the dungeon levels, but it's not, it's not the main thing. It's not the favorite part of the game for me. The the main part for me is interacting with these adorable characters right here who are currently arguing about whether or not this house is rustic. And, Mm -hmm. and Robin is having her carpentry skills insulted, apparently. Don't insult Robin's carpentry skills, just just don't she's the one who upgrades your dude, entire building you don't want to upset her dude she, she's got an axe i would not make fun she of her she really does she loses it at one point you have to return it to her that's, that's one of the quests oh tell me it's one of those things where it falls into a river and then you find a silver and gold axe and they're like which one is yours no. and you have to be like neither no it's just All her right. favorite axe which she because that likes. that that storyline i know harvest moon does that all the time where they have like the the fairy show up with two axes and it's like did you drop this silver axe and you're like no what about this golden one and you're like nope still no and she's like okay well here's your regular axe back but i made it way better because you were honest Yay. With me. yeah the game doesn't do a lot of that it's there's not a lot of pressure in this game at all and any area where you would normally find pressure is hugely reduced like you can upset people by giving them stuff they don't like, but it's pretty much impossible to make them hate you forever. Um, you, right. you can fail a challenge. It doesn't matter. You'll get the challenge again, eventually. It's a very mm. low-pressure game, which, again, part of the appeal. So the characters are, are really the main source of conflict in the game. I mean, you know what I've always said about how a story is about a person that wants something and is having trouble getting it? Mm-hmm. That's what everybody in this game wants something, and everybody is having trouble getting it, and a lot of them don't. Mm-hmm. No matter how much you play the game, you cannot fix the lives of everybody in this idyllic community. And it's a right. much more complex community than it might look on first glance. I concerned it puts so much time into writing the scripts. I, well, I mean, it's, it's interesting that uh, just from a narrative aspect. Your character, technically speaking, you know, as as far as uh, stories going of you uh, having a problem or, or wanting something and having trouble getting it, technically speaking, you don't have a problem no. right now. <laughs> well, you do. Um, it's called not starving. 
<laughs> right, but I mean, uh, there is there really a like if your character is there like is there a food mechanic? Can your character not eat and um, be okay? Yeah, there, there's no real food mechanic. Um, it's mostly just about making money. As I said, the game is low pressure. There's no real risk. Well, that that that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Is that I think it's interesting that um, the story yeah. of the game is that other people mm. have problems and need help getting it, yeah. and you are just that catalyst to find out about their narratives right. and their stories. And by bonding with those characters through all the mechanics I mentioned earlier, you start activating the cutscenes and learning more about them. Pierre here actually has one of the more interesting stories I find in that his business that he runs here in the town is struggling an awful lot because of a supermarket that has opened near town. A supermarket that incidentally is run by the same people who you have, you know, just... Quit, quit from. For. Yeah, so that's the closest thing the game has to a villain. And Georgia Court mm. basically represents everything the character is running away from. Elliot here, mm. who I married in my other game, he moved to the coast to become a writer to, to try and learn his craft better in that location. And speaking of cutscenes, we're starting one of Pierre's right now, and oh god. Watch out, here he comes. The closest thing the game has to a villain. Hello, Morris. Hello, Morris. Go jump in a fire, Morris. Oh, that's mean. I'm being mean, yes. He's just a businessman doing his job. Although, although it, it, it takes some fucking balls to walk into someone else's store and be like, 50% off, yeah, everyone! Right. It takes some balls of the community <laughs> to just immediately go, but you know, if somebody hands your money off like that, what are you gonna do? Yeah. So poor Pierre, he's he can't match, can't match those, prices. those prices. Yeah. Aww. Poor guy. Oh, go away, Morris. You're not a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's the kind of face he had. <laughs> that's, that's his voice as well. <laughs> but no, that one of the main plots of the game actually means you can help Pierre's business out a lot by um by what you're about to see actually um. This cutscene plays into a lot of the rest of the game. You're about to enter the Pelican City Community, Pelican Town Community Center, um, which as looks you, looks uh, like it held hold together real well. <laughs> yeah, um, it's somehow still in one piece, despite the fact that that ivy should probably have brought the roof down. Yep, what's left of it is definitely the way to go. So Georgia Corp is so, been hounding them to sell the land, and if you can actually buy a membership in Georgia Corp. And sell out the community mm. centre. People in town will have jobs who work at the Georgia Mart, but Pierre struggles an awful lot more if you make that decision. And also the game mm. itself becomes harder because it changes from a bundle-based system to a financial system. You just have to donate money, and that's mm. much harder to do in this game than to fill the bundles, although anybody doing the bundles might disagree. But... If so you, ba basically, you can either rebuild the community center and help the town thrive, mm. but it might undo uh, the work Joja Corp is doing, which could cause some friends of yours to lose their jobs. Basically, yeah. You literally lose so, people's their jobs. <laughs> right. Um, and, and so, like, th this is something that drew me to Harvest Moon when I was younger, uh, which was the idea of this... You know, it's kind of this idealized world, but not in the sense that everything is perfect. Mm. It's idealized because you have to work hard, and there are people around you who have problems that need your help, uh, and that there are situations that don't necessarily have right and wrong mm. answers. Or solutions. But it, yeah, or solutions. And it, it, I, it's idealized because... You're always rewarded for your decisions. You're never pressured to do specific things. Mm. It is always just work hard and pick the choices you think are best. Interact with the people that you're interested in. Help them with their problems. Yeah. Uh, and a game like this that clearly you, you love this community so much. You managed to talk about it <laughs> for, for 14 minutes now. Uh, it makes it very real. Mm. You know, it's very, it's still very gamey. You're still handing people gifts and watching a heart meter go up, but it it, it gives it this the sense of reality. And in this case, in you're calling idealized... Demetrius out on his crap. 
Right. Demetrius is uh, one of the more interesting give... characters, most definitely, in the game. Mm. He's, um... If you... You can learn a lot about the people um, just by looking around their houses and snooping in their personal belongings, essentially. Once you hit a certain fondness with somebody, you can go in their room. You see all sorts of things. You learn all sorts about them. Um, there are characters in this game who are dealing with, with parental grief. There are characters who are dealing with severe depression. There are characters who are step-parents. Demetrius here is the step-parent in the game. If you go in his room, you can find a... Um, a guide on being a step parent because he's just not getting along with his stepson and you can't fix that you can't make mm. his stepson have a better relationship with him you can't fix Shane's clinical depression you can't bring people's parents back and that gives it that makes it very real as you said the the situation that you're creating it's mm. i think it's very important that those like i suppose you could call them soap opera issues exist because that's what makes the community what it is and what gives the characters so many surprising layers it, it, it's it's just an interesting way to handle it by you know allowing things to be represented through gameplay mechanics such as giving them gifts and, and you know I- interacting in cutscenes and mm. stuff like that but having them have these issues and interesting developments mm. that uh you know it's unabashedly it's unabashedly optimistic yes. without without ignoring that characters are flawed mm. and they are very flawed um case in point the guy who's on screen right now the wizard that lives outside of town doesn't interact with a lot of the other characters the way that the others do um at some point late in my original game which you saw a clip of before um i started becoming so friendly with the wizard that he started mentioning, oh, somebody in this town is my daughter. I suspect that. It, it, I think that might be the case. And you're like, what, really? And then you hear from Pierre that he doesn't think Abigail looks very like him. And this is just a random statement. There's no context to this. There's no cutscene. It's just something they say. And you're like, okay, I have this information now. I cannot do anything with it. Which is frustrating, mm-hmm. but also real. Because really, it's none of your business. And Right. Yeah. I I thought we'd end this with um with a nice little trip to the beyond and the world of supernatural forces or possibly a trip. I'm not sure what the wizard did to us. Bro. It involves What? <laughs> it involves trees. Your 420 blazing. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Jesus. I I'm not sure. Apparently this gives you the ability to speak to the little creatures that are living in the community center so quite essential for the plot does it actually it does yeah you you learn how to oh, well there you go you've them. gained the power of forest magic you also got high yeah, as got balls really high. tomorrow's just gonna go <laughs> back in to check he actually just saw what he saw and to give the guy a parsnip apparently okay I don't quite know why i did that but anyway <laughs> that is it that is stardew valley and it's wonderfully diverse and complex and interesting community that I just absolutely love and I really enjoyed the 200 plus hours that I put into this game learning about the characters unlocking every possible story I was surprised by how much I liked it and there was so much more story than I was expecting there to be which I think it's changed my perspective quite a bit on games like this and I'm probably going to pick up a few more of them like it in the future I'm definitely looking forward to the DLC and multiplayer which will add a completely mm. new element. Multiplayer is going to be great fun, although I have no That's... idea how they're going to instigate it. Uh, that will be very interesting. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds really cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more games like this. It's cool to see it. Uh, you know, it feels like a game that a lot of people were waiting for for a very long time. Uh, and to see this kind of style of game make a return. Mm. And so triumphantly, especially from one, one guy who did all the work. Worked on it for literally years. Uh, and that is, that's. I mean, the whole. That's beautiful. It is. That's really and all I, I have to say about it. The influx of indie games is definitely giving us a lot more of that recently. Not that blockbusters can't have fantastic plots and fantastic characters and stories, but it's just nice to see things like this have a niche, and to get back mm. out there into into the wild beyond and 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 can we have more games like this please 
Please, Mostardi Valley. That would be awesome. You could you could say it would be ideal. Yeah. We're gonna now, stop the video now. now. And now we now we start fading out. <sighs> Somewhat. A little bit quieter here. <laughs> go back to being loud at this part. Okay. And then go a little bit quiet. Go a little bit quieter here. And then just as it's so quiet that they can barely hear me.